Welcome to episode 169 of the weekly Shared Security Show, and joining me is the Sith Lord himself, Kevin Johnson. You know, I wasn't going to say the name, but did you ever notice that your voice completely changes when you do the introduction? It becomes like this sing-song voice. It's awesome. I love it. <laughs> That's my announcer voice. <laughs> yeah, totally, totally. I'm just going to start calling you Don Pardo. And <laughs> fine, I'll I'll be Don. That's that's cool. <laughs> yeah. So since you called it out, I'll point out you guys demanded it. I finally yes. made it. I made the change. Amazing. Yeah. Finally. So those of you watching this on YouTube, you uh, you need to check. You'll probably be very happy to see that uh, Darth Vader has made an, an appearance <laughs> finally in Kevin's background. Yeah, so. You got to thank Larry and Ben because they moved. They moved them yesterday. Okay. Vader in because. I wasn't in the office. I'm like, oh man, uh, you guys do this. And they did. You didn't use billable consultants, so you're good. No, no I, I, I did. I, <laughs> <laughs> on a weekend, in fact. Wow. Oh, no, yesterday. It was. Oh, okay. Yesterday. That was worth Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What is today? <laughs> what is today? <laughs> oh, man. You don't need to know. <laughs> I don't know. You don't need to know. It's not important. Yeah. It's another day in COVID. That's right. <laughs> That's right. So, how are, how are things? Uh, good, busy. I got my second vaccine shot, which I'm excited about, uh, which is good because right at the the 14 day mark, I'm going to be flying somewhere to physically break into a bank. Um, oh, yeah. Notice I said somewhere. See how good I am. With ah, that. very Goodness, nice. Very right? nice. Yeah. Yeah. That actually, if you now for our listeners. Uh, that's actually a good segue to talk about the last two episodes. We did a few best of episodes and the last episode was Jason street who talked about how he broke into the wrong bank. I don't know if you ever heard yeah, that story from Jason. No, no, yeah. it's not. Jason tells that story all the time. So I've heard it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and I thought it'd be good. You know, I was on vacation. Thought it'd be good to, we did uh, Rachel Toback um, on that first best yep. of, and then we did Jason last week. So, those are two Rachel really Boston. fun interviews. Yeah. So. so check those out if you haven't already. But uh, but this week we're back with an all new episode with our friend Kevin and Darth Vader. So this is great. I'm really excited. <laughs> Darth Vader won't be talking in this no, episode. No, though. my voice box is uh, not powered up. Oh, that's too bad. That would have been fun. <laughs> so wrong. <laughs> so, uh, so the news, I was catching up from some of the news over the last uh, week here. And uh, there's been a lot of uh, data breaches. And I put that in quotes, data breaches. Quotes, italics. Um, I think it was, yeah, Facebook had phone numbers, email addresses, I think yep. data births, relationship statuses, locations, all this data like 533 million Facebook users, yeah. um, which were exposed. Then we had LinkedIn that was uh, on April 6th. So there was 500 million LinkedIn profiles. Data was leaked from that. And then Clubhouse had uh, 1.3 million users had their data leaked as well. Yeah. Now, what I find interesting is that some news reports are saying these are data breaches and then some are calling them data leaks. Yeah. And what's interesting is that in all of these cases, the data wasn't, wasn't leaked or breached from a hack. Right. It was leaked from data scraping. So yeah. somebody scraping the data off of profiles. So I thought it'd be good just to have a conversation about what is the difference between a data leak that is caused from scraping information off the web versus a database that's been hacked and that data is exposed. I think there's a big difference, I think. There is, and there's not. Yes. <laughs> right, like right. I, I it's, this is one of those weird places. I'll say, let's start with the Clubhouse one because I think the mm -hmm. Clubhouse one is the most, the simplest one to, to show that it's not really a breach, it's just a leak. And yeah. the reason I say that is my understanding, and again, I've not worked any of these cases. I've not, right, like, I, based on public news, blah, 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 disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Um, all of the stuff that was captured in the Clubhouse uh, uh, data leak is stuff that Clubhouse makes public anyways, right? So the there, Clubhouse said, and accurately so, if you look at their system, 
yeah. that none of that data was that did they consider it private did they consider it something that somebody couldn't have access to anyways the the issue here was more of a an amount of data somebody grabbed not like they didn't bypass any controls they didn't do anything like that whereas the other two breach uh, the other two examples i almost said i started to say breach and it's not really uh -huh. <laughs> um the other two both facebook and linkedin make efforts to prevent that type of scraping or stuff like that. So um, they're closer to a breach, right? Because in, in my opinion, and this is a simplistic example mm -hmm. definition, and I'm sure that we can be pedantic and argue about all of it, but the, the definition of a breach compared to like a leak is that in the breach, you had to bypass some type of control to get to it. I, I feel, right? Like I, that, that's right. That, that I think that leaves out lots of the definitions of breaches, right? But with with Clubhouse, you didn't bypass anything. You just grabbed all of the data available. With Facebook, the information they gave out, the information they grabbed is not stuff Facebook or LinkedIn makes public normally. Now, LinkedIn is slightly different. It's kind of between the two, right? You got Facebook on one side, Clubhouse on the other. LinkedIn the data they got is public according to LinkedIn. The difference is right. LinkedIn tries to prevent people from doing bulk scraping like that and they failed. That, that, yeah. That's why it's, it's not quite as simple as the Clubhouse one, but it's not quite the breach of the Facebook one. So it's, it's weird. That, that, that's my understanding of the three examples sitting there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and that doesn't undermine the fact that this data can be valuable. Oh, yeah to somebody yep. i think uh in with the linkedin data in fact someone is trying to sell that on the dark web for you know bitcoin yep. um four figure digit sum of bitcoin so yep. you know, someone is interested in buying this information even though it's not from a breach but yep. that is still valuable information at the end of the day yeah, absolutely I, I the one thing i i did know a number of the articles about the facebook one talked about it being every facebook user Right. And I, I've looked, mm -hmm. I've not seen all of my accounts in there. Some of them are <laughs> right. Like <laughs> how many accounts do you have, Kevin? <laughs> a lot. I don't, I, I, we joke about this all the time, by the way, I had a few thousand for a while, but I think most of them yes. are just the withered. I, I don't <laughs> Ever since our DEF CON talk, like people always like come up to us and like, sure, is that the real Kevin on Facebook? Which one of his accounts is it? And oh, the funny part is, yeah. I really do have an actual Facebook account that I, I to use. What I have found it, this is what I've gotten down to. Remember, I had stopped using it completely. Yes. So here's what I've started doing I log in every morning to check birthdays to make sure I don't forget somebody's birthday I'm not supposed to forget. Right. <laughs> and then if I make pens, I'll post a picture of the pens I made. That's it. That's what I do on Facebook now. That's like, more than I do. Uh, yeah, I know. I but that's all I'm I do. Off. I check yeah. birthdays and post pens. <laughs> so that's really funny. That's really yeah. Those funny. one. The, the, it's interesting. I do think your point is absolutely critical, though. Just because the data is public, or just because the data was not breached to gain access to it, that doesn't mean it's without risk to either the organization or the people whose data it is, right? Um, I think it's interesting. Clubhouse reacted very fast to say, not a breach, not a breach. This isn't bad. This is our data because they recognize the harm it could do to them to see that type of data. Um, I will acknowledge that. I don't, I've never used Clubhouse. Um, I don't we don't know. have an invite, so. Yeah, I don't have an invite, but even if I did have an invite, isn't it iOS only? Yeah, so yeah, you're out. So, you can't you can't invite my Android phone. So I mean you could, but um yeah, no, not at all. But that one is that one's weird. Yeah. And for I think maybe our listeners that aren't familiar with with scraping, maybe can we can we talk a little bit about what, what scraping is? Just That's so good point. I you know it's funny you say that because we were just discussing, we're we're rewriting one of our main classes, and I'm not gonna talk about that, but um uh for a run we're doing during the summer. And we talked about the fact that in rewriting it, we have to make sure that the people who teach it all the time are not the main people rewriting it. 
because we very often will say, oh yeah, scraping. And we just assume everybody knows because we know what that means. And so I, I, I find that funny, but you're absolutely right. Scraping is automated tooling that will basically browse a website and pull the data off of it. It scrapes the web page to capture the data that web page does. So um, if you've got a web page that, you know, it lists the username, phone number, address, and email address of somebody, but, and all you do is change a URL parameter to get to the next person, you could scrape that by having a program access the one page, pull the data, access the next page, pull the data. That's all a scraper is. Uh, Google's search bot is a mm -hmm. scraper. Yep. Uh, it goes across the internet and scrapes web pages to display their description, their title, and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Does that, that work for a description? Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, that's a great way to describe it. Yep. Yep. And the thing with LinkedIn is because you have to be authenticated to do this said scraping um, because they don't have public. Well, there are public profiles that you can yeah. find through Google, but you know how LinkedIn will basically give you, you have to log in before you can do anything or see any data. Yeah. So or at least that, the majority of the data, right? Like right. they've got samples and stuff like that. Yeah. It's so. a tough problem to prevent though, because you could block automated bots and you could do all kinds of things. But I mean, you and I know as pen testers, um, yeah. that that's a, that's a difficult problem to prevent. I think the biggest and what we talk about, there, I mean, there are ways to attempt to stop that's what I mean, yeah. right? But um, I think the biggest thing is it's a detective control, right? So you should be able to detect. See, I got I threw my CISP stuff out there, right? You yeah. did. And uh, <laughs> you have to be able to detect it is actually the, the yeah. last line of defense there. It's, that's it's right. It's happening and stopping it at that point. Absolutely. So. Spring and summer are upon us, and that means it's time for some much needed vacation time with friends and family. But this also means that you need to be aware of data privacy and how to protect your laptops, smartphones, and key fobs while traveling. Airports and other public areas can often be targeted by attackers looking to gain access to your devices through their wireless signals. So instead of worrying about disabling or turning off wireless functions, it's so much easier to place them in a Faraday bag when they're not being used. And if you want the best protection that you can get, you want to be using Silent Pocket's premium Faraday bag product line that blocks all wireless signals. So don't forget to get yourself a Faraday bag before you head out on your vacation. And right now, you can use discount code Shared Security and receive 10% off your order during checkout at silentpocket.com. Is your team starting to show signs of fatigue from traditional security awareness compliance training or from phishing assessments that target them for those teachable moments? As we've seen in recent news, these kinds of training are having a negative impact on corporate culture and they're really not all that effective. So there has to be a better way. ClickArmor is the first gamified learning platform that helps build a self-defending team through engaging learning challenges and exercises. Its unique lesson templates, built with proven gamification techniques, let people learn and exercise important defensive concepts in a safe and fun environment. Whether you need to quickly deploy a training solution that gets people to stop clicking on things immediately, or you've got your own boring content that needs to be put into a more interesting user experience, ClickArmor can help. So go to clickarmor.ca slash shared security to learn how to build a self-defending team. So uh, the other story that uh, was interesting sure. this week, this is going to make, mad. Uh, is gonna make you a little mad. Yeah. This is the, uh, the FBI. Um, I actually like the title of the, the article um, FBI nuked web shells from hacked exchange servers without telling owners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I don't like that title. I, I, yeah, feel, uh, <laughs> I think it should be something like FBI decides that they don't want to be ethical anymore uh, or at all. And they wanted to hack into victims' computers and make changes without telling the victim because they thought they knew better. So Kevin just reworded that title for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I uh, I get it. I've, I've oh man. So for the people who don't know, the idea here is there were vulnerabilities in Exchange. Attackers were compromising Exchange servers all over the place, and they were leaving these web shells, which is just a web interface to 
interact with the underlying operating system, right? A back so, door. yeah, a back door, a back door. And what they decided was, and the FBI went to a judge and said, hey, let us do this. And they were issued. Now, I've, I've heard two different things. I've heard that they were issued a warrant. I've also heard that it wasn't a warrant that a judge ruled that it was okay, that it was a decision that gave them the rights. And I think the warrant is accurate. It was actually a warrant because I saw yeah. a picture of it. On yeah, the, that's, that's right. I, and so yeah. I think the warrant is, is right. Um, but they were given a warrant to be able to basically access the back door as if they were the attacker, make a copy of the back door, and then delete it so that they uncompromised the system. That That's not true, but that's how it's presented, right? Yes. Like, because uh, you didn't uncompromise the system, you removed one of the indicators of compromise. That's it. Um, and you did it by compromising the system a second time. And something else I find very interesting is that they made it clear in their request for the warrant that this was not to gain evidence of a crime, it was to disrupt criminal activity. And that's that is interesting. That, that's interesting to me because that's very different than what warrants are really used for, right? Um, I personally, I get it. I've seen a lot of people, Dave Kennedy came out in, in support of this idea of the FBI doing this. I get it, right? Life sucks. The internet is full of vulnerable people and people don't fix things. And we, somebody else replied to me on Twitter. It was like, well, don't you understand? We reach people all the time and they don't answer. Yeah, I'm well aware of that. I don't get answers when I reach out to people. That doesn't give us the right to break in and make changes to the system. And if it was you and I, we've talked about hacking back before, um, I would be less angry about it. I'm not sure I'd agree with doing it, but I'd be less angry. But when the government decides, <laughs> screw you, hippie. I, I <laughs> No, this is, I'm a very firm believer that this is a slippery slope to backdoor. I think it is. Right? If, yeah. if we're willing to accept that the FBI can break into systems and make changes, then why aren't we willing to accept that backdoors and encryptions are okay? And, and God, I hope nobody quotes me as saying that's okay because it's not backdoors and encryption. But, but I don't see how you can be okay with them doing this and not be okay with the other. And that's why I say it's a slippery slope, right? Yeah, and the FBI said the, the big reason they were doing this too was that, um, that most of the victims of these exchange breaches were, you know, unlikely to un uninstall them themselves because they weren't technically competent to do so. So um, they made um, kind of a broad assumption. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm glad that the FBI is now judging our technical competence. Um, I didn't realize that was their job. Could we talk about their technical competence for a bit? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. It's just, it, it's like you, this, this makes me a little like, I don't have a good warm and fuzzy about it. Um, you know, and we, we've talked many times about the government uh, overextending their rights into, <laughs> into things. Yeah. And this is just another one that I just don't feel very comfortable with. I made somebody very, very angry when I compared this to a no knock warrant and we know how effective and well those work out. Oh people. boy. Um, yeah, I know that's a, that's an, a, a, a way out there comparison, but right. that's what it is. Right. I logged into your system. I didn't tell you I was doing it and I made changes. I, nobody can die from this that yeah. we know of. So that's good. And I'm not right. at that level, but I, I just, I'm really bothered by us giving the FBI the ability to do what they want. Inside. Now, doesn't, uh, I mean, wasn't the FBI, weren't they doing things, this is years ago when they were tracking like, um, um, online predators yep. weren't they like on the dark web the reason that they could expose someone's real ip address was they were infecting their their browsers like tour browsers right yeah I, intercepting uh, I, there was something about that that was i believe that was the fbi that might yeah. have not been the fbi it might have been a consultant for the fbi which, oh okay which let's be very clear well I, <laughs> i'm not sure i agree yeah. with drawing the line that way but i know that yeah. line has been drawn many times right Right. It's not the military. It's 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 uh, consultants yeah. or contractors. Um, I I believe that was the FBI. Okay, because there was and controversy I, over that. I yeah, mean, I just, and th these were potential criminals, but then people brought up like, do they have the right to do that because they're actually hacking your machine? Yeah, and they 
just to stay, you're a suspect at that point. Yeah. And, and don't get me wrong. I can see the argument of allowing the FBI to break into machines. I can. And there are certain cases where I think I would side with letting them. Oh, yeah. My biggest complaint here about this is the way they went about it. I, 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 I think it's, it's, you know, I, one, using a warrant is wrong. That's, that's, I'm not a lawyer and only two of my Facebook profiles pretend to be. Um, I, but it, my understanding, having worked in the legal system, at least somewhat, that's not what warrants are for. And so that bothers me. Right. Um, and two, I, I'm really bothered by we made changes to your system and we didn't notify you because like I asked and I've not gotten anybody to give me an answer. My understanding of most of the breach notification laws, that company was breached. So they should be notifying people. But this is a separate breach. And so now they need to notify people again. Right. Right. So I, this is, it gets weird. Yeah. Yeah. How does that happen? Do we have an exclusion to the breach? Is it okay? Because it was the FBI. So it's, yeah, not it's the breach? FBI. I mean, what? <laughs> and what else did the FBI grab? Right. Like, they so you're claim. just trusting them. Yeah. Oh, exchange servers have no sensitive data on them. There's never sensitive data. In <laughs> Perfectly okay. Oh, by the way, would that not be an unlawful search if they went in and grabbed the email as well? How do we know they didn't? How do we know they didn't read the emails that were on those servers? They're exchange servers. Lots of questions. Yeah. Lots and of questions. I, I'm really bothered by and this Dangerous is something- precedent. Yeah. Yeah, this is something I called David Kennedy out about. It, he keeps referring to it. Other people keep referring to it in a transparent and open manner. And I'm not sure that you can call what they did transparent and open just because they did a press release about it afterwards, right? If they were being transparent and open, they would have notified the victims. They would have told us they were doing it as they were doing it. And they would reveal logs of them doing it. They would reveal what servers they did. I, I've got an exchange server that I use for stuff. Did they log into that one? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. And I do know they didn't, but <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I just, I, this is one I could rant on for a while. Yeah. I uh, Crazy don't stuff. like it. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, it looks like that's all we have time for today, but again, thanks Thank for uh, coming back on. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, and, more, um, always love to have you. Yeah. Vader will be here for at least a few weeks and then we'll oh, swap good. for the Gamorrean Guard or something else, right? So you got to keep rotating it. <laughs> the, our audience will be waiting <laughs> no, with bated breath for the next Star Wars uh, <laughs> mannequin behind you. So. Which character will be next? <laughs> That's right. All right, Kevin. Well, uh, Thank thanks for coming on and uh, everyone else. Thanks for listening and we'll talk to you all next time. That's all for this week's show. Be sure to follow The Shared Security Show on Twitter and Instagram for the latest news and show updates. If you like this episode, please hit that like and subscribe button and please subscribe to us on your favorite podcast listening app. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week for another episode of The Shared Security Show. (laughs) 